This is Peggy Peck in Orlando at the 2008 Gastrointestinal Cancer Symposium. I'm speaking with Dr. George Dimitri from Dana-Farber, who reported some interesting research on the treatment of GIST. Dr. Dimitri, can you describe what you are reporting here? Yes, we took samples from the original registration study for imatinib, or Gleevec, as treatment for advanced GIST. And we were interested to see whether the levels of drug in people's blood correlated with the amount of benefit they got from imatinib treatment of the advanced GIST. We've got long-term follow-up on these patients. About 20% of patients are still on the study. So we had long-term data that we could correlate with the drug levels. And importantly, when you give imatinib or any other kinase inhibitor to a group of patients, they will handle it very differently. Some people will have high levels, some people will have low levels. So we actually looked at that and we split the groups into four groups, some with very low levels, some with medium levels, and some with higher levels. Turns out the patients with the very low levels had the least amount of benefit from the drug in this univariate analysis. The important part about that is whether we, for years, might be underdosing people and whether we perhaps should develop a blood test to check the levels of this drug in people's blood and have more certainty that there's actually therapeutic levels in the blood. And, and the, as I understand it, the, um, the, the levels of the drug did not, they didn't correlate with a person's uh, size or there were no other fact or, or, or does the extent of disease, is that, is that correct? Correct. The level, you can't predict necessarily the level of the drug in the blood, even by the dose, because there are some people who have a high dose, but the drug level is relatively low. Others may metabolize it more slowly. So you give them a lower dose and they have a higher level in the blood. So because you can't necessarily predict that, it leads itself to something that may be a useful diagnostic test and perhaps a predictive marker of who's going to benefit from this drug. There are easy tests to do this, mm -hmm. and in clinical work, we're used to checking drug levels on mm -hmm. certain drugs all the time. Dilantin, for example, mm -hmm. a very common drug. We check drug levels all the time. Similar technology could be applied and has been applied in the research setting to check the level of imatinib and its major metabolite in the blood. That could certainly be geared up to be done more broadly. But it's not done currently, is it? Is it is not done. It is still a research question. Mm -hmm. And part of our presentation today on behalf of our global group was to raise the question to the field and say, should we study this more in depth? It's possible that we would have done this analysis and seen nothing at all. But in fact, we saw something a bit worrisome for the patients with the lowest levels of the drug. So then the next step. So the next step is to talk with our colleagues, decide exactly how much this is worth pursuing, and decide how to mount a larger trial, what kind of a mechanism we'd need to get a central laboratory to monitor these levels and then track patients' outcomes. Thank you, Doctor. Reporting from the 2008 Gastrointestinal Cancer Symposium in Orlando, I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.